for years I sat back and feasted on the fights and humiliations you kids pile onto one another. The senseless bullying, the humiliation of being picked last for baseball, the endless teasing about someone's hair or clothes. When it comes to being mean, kids have cornered the market. Well, when the piper came to me with his plan to blow up the barrier from below, I was hesitant. After all, I had a pretty good time going here to school for a night. Well, I have these little rug rags to keep me fed. The three ever after children laughed at their father's teasing. But then I realized there's a great big world of anger, war, and pain for me to feast on out there. So I signed on. It wasn't easy though. Piper used his magic music, and every night the children of the school came to dig out the tunnels. At first, we tried to use all the kids, but the little ones are so weak, we had to make do with the fifth and sixth graders. Unfortunately, there was another unforeseen problem. The next morning, those same kids, the ones who supplied me with the most energy, were too sleepy to argue with one another. They went from a raging river of emotions that are dripping faster overnight. The piper and I were just about to give up when you walked through the door. What do I have to do with it? Sabrina asked, doing her best to buy time until she could come up with a plan. Sabrina, you're like the Niagara Falls of anger. It just keeps pouring over the edges. Every time you lost your temper, it was like a four-course meal with all the trimmings, Rumpelstiltskin said, as blue electricity crackled out of his fingertips. Once I tapped into it, I turned up the volume on you and could barely keep up with this energy, so Rumpelstiltskin continued. Truth be told, we probably didn't have to kill Grumpner or the janitor, but could sense how outraged you would get. And it worked. Every little paranoia and prejudice was amplified by a million. Thanks to you, I finally have what it takes to blast a hole into the barrier. Once it's open, I'll be free and the scarlet hand will march across the ward, destroying anyone who gets in their way. So you're the scarlet hand, Sabrina said, even now feeling the anger rise within her. You took my parents. The scarlet hand isn't a person, child. It's a movement. An idea. It's bigger than all of us. I'm just one spoke in the very big wheel. Where's my son? A man shouted. Rumpelstiltskin shrieked and moved to safety behind Natalie's hulking body just as Principal Hammer raced into the cave. He looked exhausted, beaten and on the edge of madness. His shirt was covered in his own blood and he limped painfully. In his hands were his bagpipes. Tell me where my boy is, I will play a song that will tear you apart. Hammond raged as he charged the little man. Rumpelstiltskin cowered in a corner. The boy got in the way, he cried, gnashing his teeth at his much taller partner. I warned you about keeping him under control. Where is he? Hamlin demanded. Toby pointed one of his long spindly legs at the ceiling. High on the cave wall, away from the others was a mound of wire from which no head poked and no movement came at all. Hamlin fell to his knees and buried his head in his hands. Bring him down, Toby, Rumpelstiltskin said. Oh dear, he was almost ready to eat, the spider kid whined. Do it. Rumpelstiltskin demanded. Reluctantly, Toby scaled the wall, cut the web loose with his razor sharp legs, and carried the boy gingerly to the ground. He sat him down at Helen's feet and scurried back to his father. He was caught in too many distractions, Rumpelstiltskin explained. He was jeopardizing our plans. Hamlet ignored the explanation as he tore the rest of the threads off his son. When the boy was finally free, Hamlet leaned down to listen for breathing. He's gone, Hamlet cried as he sat his boy down gently and climbed to his feet. He took his pipes and filled them with air, and you are going to pay for it. 
Before he could blow a single note, Bella leaped across the room, shot out her sticky tongue, and wrapped it around the bagpipes. She yanked this instrument out of the piper's hands and into her mouth, swallowed it whole. That daddy's little girl, Rumpel Stilton cheered. Natalie rushed to a corner of the room and returned with a can. She dipped her hand inside it, and when she pulled it out, it was covered in red paint. Try and lay the mark on the kid's body. Hamlin shook with fat fury. You and your scarlet hand killing innocents. This wasn't part of our plan, troll. I just want it out of this town. You never had the backbone to do what had to be done, Piper. The little creature cried. Someone has to make the hard decisions. Like killing my boy, Hamlin said. I know your pain, Grandpa Stutskin said. If I were to lose one of my children, I would be heartbroken too. But I would still put them in harm's way for the greater good. These aren't your children, Sabrina shouted. You took advantage of their real parents. You play on their fears and make them feel hopeless. Their real parents want them back. Toby looked confused. Is that true, father? The spider boy clicked. You said they abandoned me in the park. They did, son, Rappel Stiltskin said. He's lying, Sabrina cried. I've talked to your parents, Toby. They've been searching for you since the day they gave you to the sicker. He played with their emotions, made them believe you'd be better off with him. You weren't found in my any park. Rappel Stiltskin manipulated your mom and dad and then paid them millions of dollars for you. He bought you, Toby, for the same reason he bought Natalie and Bella, so he could feed on you. Yeah, not that time out either. Let, not the time. Let's just continue. He's lying, Sabrina cried. I am talking to you. Uh, I've talked to your parents, Toby. They've been searching for you since the day they gave you to this sicko. He played with their emotions, made them believe you'd be better off with him. You weren't found in any park. Rumpelstiltskin manipulated your mom and dad and paid them millions of dollars for you. He bought you, Toby, for the same reason he bought Natalie and Bella, so he could feed on you. She's lying, children, Rapper Stutzkin said. People are always lying about me. They want to take you away from me. It's not fair, children. Something has to be done to stop the people who hate me. We believe you, Father, Bella said, her face boiling with rage. Can we kill them now? said Natalie as she looked at Sabrina with motherless eyes. Sabrina knew that Rapper Stiltskin could control the anger in others. Looking at the two girls, it was obvious to her that the little girl had turned his power all the way up. How could Daddy resist his little Natalie? Go have your fun. The monster stalked Harmon, backing him into a corner. Sabrina wanted to rush to his side, but Toby blocked her path. The Pine Piper was about to die, and there was nothing anyone could do with it. About it. Without your pipes, you are nothing, Hamelin, Rumpelstiltskin said. And now that the barrier has been breached, your usefulness has expired. The Piper reached into his pocket and pulled out something shiny. He looked down at it lovingly, and he raised it to his lips and blew into it. A low, sorrowful note came out of Wendell's harmonica, and the ground began to shake violently. I don't need my pipes. Hamlin shouted at his former partner. Suddenly, the floor cracked and a huge fissure opened. At first, nothing but steam bashed out of it, but soon a flood of ants, worms, roaches, centipedes, and a million other creepy crawling things flew out of the hole and attacked Rumpelstiltskin and his children. The frog girl leaped onto the ceiling, but was immediately overcome by a swarm of flying cockroaches. Losing her balance, she fell painfully to the ground. Natalie was quickly overrun with centipedes that wiggled and raced along her body, biting her fiercely. The monster girl growled and whined, but soon fell to her knees, unable to fight. Toby scurried around the cave, spraying words at the sea of maggots that poured over him. He shrieked and cried as he rushed around the room, but the tide of insects was too much for him and he was engulfed. Rumpelstiltskin didn't fare much better. Leeches covered the little man and fell, and he fell over in agony. 
Mr. Hamlin, please help me get to the roof, Sabrina said, grabbing her shovel. Hamlin blew into the homolocky again, and a rolling wave of spiders, worms, and roaches lifted Sabrina hang off, high off the ground to the ceiling above. Granny Rodal was hanging closest, so Sabrina used her good arm to pull the cobwebs from the old woman's mouth and hands. Oh, Liebling, Granny said, this is one time I'm glad you didn't listen to my rules. Sabrina smiled as she used her shovel to cut the sack of threads from the wall. The wave of bugs expanded to hold the old woman up, and while she was free, she reached into her handbag and took out a pair of scissors. She put these into Sabrina's hair and then ascended a flight of stairs the bugs created for her so she could easily step to the ground. Sabrina rode the tide of creepy crawlers to the next person, who happened to be Daphne. She yanked and pulled until the little girl was free, using the scissors to cut her off of the wall. Daphne was in tears, but she threw her arms around her older sister and hugged her tightly. The hug hurt Sabrina's arm, but she bit her lip and let her sister continue. It was then that Sabrina noticed that the Rumpelstiltskin was emitting a blue energy that swirled around him. A fireball blasted off his chest, sending a huge explosion ripping through the caves, incinerating the entire insect army. The wave of bugs that supported Sabrina and Daphne turned to ash, and the two girls tumbled to the ground, jarring Sabrina's broken arm and causing an agony that nearly knocked her unconscious. To the haze of pain, she said that the blast to destroy some of the cave tunnels and went and sent tons of rock tumbling to the ground, blocking the only exit. Worse still, the blast had damaged the foundation of the cave, and large chunks had begun to fall from the ceiling. Look what you have done, Rappelstiltskin shrieked. He lunged at the principal and knocked him down. In a struggle, Samuel's harmonica slipped from his hand and slid across the cave floor and was crushed by a falling boulder. While the two ever after fought, Granny Rhoda said, Girls, we have to find a way to get the others down. I have an idea, Daphne replied. She took Granny Rhoda's scissors and shoved them into her pocket, then rushed over to the unconscious frog girl. She kneeled down and rubbed her hands all over the beast's super sticky skin. Then she rubbed her sneakers until they were covered in the goo as well. Then she rushed to the wall, pressed her hands against the stone, and slowly but effortlessly climbed the wall. Each step made a squishy sound. Liebling, do be careful, Granny Rhoda cried. That is so punk rock, Sabrina shouted. When the little girl got to where Puck was trapped, she used the scissors to cut through the spider's web. Soon Puck was free, and as indignant as ever, he sprouted his wings and fluttered around the room. Someone is going to pay for this, he shouted. Meanwhile, Daphne went to work on Snow White. As soon as the teacher was free, Puck carried her back down to the ground safely. Soon he was doing the same for Mayor Charming and then Sheriff Hempstead. Daphne crawled along the ceiling to the last of their group, Mr. Kenneth. But before she could even cut away a strand, she slipped and fell. Puck caught her just before she hit the ground. I ran out of sticky stuff, Daphne said. In the meantime, Hamlin had picked up the gnashing rubber stilt skin and threw him violently against the wall. The little man slumped to the ground and lay very still. The piper rushed back to cradle his son. Snow White followed and crushed beside him. It's too late, Hamlin was whimpered. No, it's not, the pretty teacher replied as she felt Wendell's wrist. He's got a pulse. Snow White took the boy, laid him flat on his back, and tilted his head up. Then she took a deep breath and blew it down the boy's throat. Instantly, Wendell shuddered and he coughed. He was alive. He had some of the cobwebs in his throat, the teacher said. He couldn't get any air. Now that's the real time. Now, I understand of this video also. Goodbye.